What do August, Alcina, Stephanie, Slater, Tommy, Pam, Mandy, Patinkin, Stephen, Curry, Diamond, DeShields, and Ashton Irwin all have in common? They all have a devastating eye condition called keratoconus. Do you yourself have keratoconus or do you know a family member that does? Despite this condition presenting each and every individual that it affects with a unique set of challenges, this does not mean that these individuals do not go on to excel and achieve their dreams in whatever field they are part of. As with all of my videos, and this video being no exception, I will provide yourselves with a set of questions throughout. And as I've previously mentioned, this serves two purposes, both to keep you stimulated throughout the video, and it serves as a means for you to test your knowledge at the end of this video. The answers are all contained within this video, so please keep watching until the very end. My channel is fairly new, so please let me introduce myself to you. I am a UK qualified optometrist, medical doctor, and currently practicing to be an eye surgeon. This video aims to provide you with an overview of keratoconus, what it is, what causes it, how it is diagnosed, and how it is treated. I will now go on to talk about what keratoconus actually is. If you look at this diagram on screen now, you will see that the normal eye, when viewed from the side in a picture format, is round. If we then look at another eye from the side, you will see that keratoconus essentially is a condition in which the middle part of the front of the eye bulges outwards it becomes progressively thinner and ultimately it takes on a cone shape. I mentioned that keratoconus is a progressive condition. What I mean by this is the fact that it gradually gets worse over time. The degree of progression and the speed of progression both can vary considerably between patients. Before I go on to talk about who gets keratoconus, please do kindly subscribe to my channel as it will help my channel to grow. In terms of who gets keratoconus, it is typically picked up in patients either in their pubescent years, in their early teens or their early 20s. In terms of race, it tends to be more common in non-Caucasian individuals. For those of you watching, do you have keratoconus? If so, how were you diagnosed? Please do comment below and let me know. Keratoconus can have a big impact on one's vision. It can do this in several ways. The first way that it can affect an individual's vision is by blurring their vision. The reason blurring of vision occurs is because when the shape of the front of the eye changes, this in turn alters its ability to perfectly focus light on the back of our eyes which is needed for clarity of vision. Part of the reason that we normally see clearly is because light which hits the front of our eyes needs to get perfectly focused on the back of our eyes. So the front of our eyes is the cornea and the back of our eyes is the retina. In keratoconus when the shape of the front of the eye, i.e. the cornea, gets altered. This in turn affects its ability to perfectly focus light onto the back of our eyes. As a result of this, one's vision becomes blurry. Patients with keratoconus tend to become more short-sighted or myopic. They also tend to get varying degrees of astigmatism. The simplest way to think of astigmatism is if your eye does not have astigmatism, that basically means that your eye can be thought of as being shaped like a round football. However, if you have astigmatism, people tend to think of it as your eye being shaped like a rugby ball. The difference being that if one looks at a football, 
the football is round and regardless of the point at which you look at the football, it looks the same all the way around. However, with a rugby ball, if one looks at the ball in the vertical direction compared to the horizontal direction, the shape is slightly different and therefore the way it focuses light is therefore also different and ultimately it can result in blurred vision. Patients with keratoconus can go on to develop scarring of their corneas and this also worsens and blurs their vision further. As mentioned earlier, patients with keratoconus tend to find that their vision progressively deteriorates over time. However, patients with keratoconus can develop a acute sudden deterioration in their vision which is associated with a painful red eye and this condition is called hydrops. The cornea is actually made up of five individual layers. If there is a break or a breach of any one of these five layers this means that fluid which is within the eye can then enter the cornea and cause it to swell and become non-transparent. Remember the cornea is the clear front window of our eyes and therefore if it clouds over this ultimately means that our vision becomes blurry. You may be wondering whether in keratoconus one eye is affected or both eyes are affected. The answer to this is typically both eyes will ultimately become affected. However, in the initial stages, the condition may only be present in one eye and also patients may find that the condition is at different stages between their two eyes. For example, the right eye may have moderate to advanced keratoconus, whereas the left eye may have mild keratoconus, which is relatively untroubling to them. If you are finding this video useful, I would be terribly appreciative if you could comment, like and subscribe. When one is diagnosed with any condition, the natural question that tends to come into our minds is, why me? What we do know about keratoconus is that it is a condition that seems to be multifactorial. So far, no one cause has been identified to explain why the condition occurs. Instead, as I said, it is multifactorial, which means there are several reasons why it could come about. It could partly be due to genes that run through your family. We also know that in patients with either asthma, eczema or hay fever, the condition tends to occur more often. There may also be a link between eye rubbers and keratoconus. There are several eye conditions which if present in patients can also be associated with keratoconus. For example, one of these conditions is retinitis pigmentosa which is an inherited retinal dystrophy which causes progressive narrowing of one's visual field, nighttime blindness and generally poor visual acuity or vision. The other eye association is retinopathy of prematurity. In this condition, as the name implies, when babies are born prematurely due to various factors, they can go on to develop abnormal blood vessels in the back of their eyes, which then increases their risk of things such as retinal detachments. There are also many more ocular or eye associations with keratoconus and I would urge you to read about them further in order to expand your knowledge. I will now talk about conditions that can affect other parts of your body and those conditions can have an association with keratoconus. So the first three conditions that I would like to mention are asthma, eczema and hay fever. These three conditions together tend to be referred to as atopy. There are several syndromes that have an association with keratoconus. For example, Marfan syndrome, Ehler-Danlos syndrome and Down syndrome. Again, I would urge you to read about the conditions that can affect our general health and also have an association with keratoconus. 
Here in the UK, typically patients will present to their optometrists with symptoms of keratoconus, such as blurred vision. Through conducting a thorough eye test, including a detailed history and a comprehensive eye examination, the optometrist may be suspicious of keratoconus. Typically, in the optometry environment, the patient's eye is examined under the microscope, also known as the slit lamp. If there is a suspicion of keratoconus, these patients will typically be referred to the hospital eye setting. In the hospital eye setting, more specialist tests can be performed in order to diagnose the condition. The go-to test in terms of diagnosis of keratoconus is a test called corneal topography. Corneal topography not only aids the doctor in allowing them to make their initial diagnosis, but the test can also be used to monitor one's condition over time and can be used as a tool to assess effectiveness of treatment. Ultimately, the topographer is providing information about the shape of the front of the eye, which is the cornea. Each eye is looked at individually and then both eyes are compared. As you can see on screen now, this is a normal topographic printout for a patient that does not have keratoconus. And if we compare this to a printout for a patient that does have keratoconus, you can see how the color sequence on the printout is different and this ultimately implies and indicates to us that the shape is different and the center of the cornea in the patient that has keratoconus is, if you remember, cone-shaped and thin and bulging forwards. The first question that patients with keratoconus may ask is, can I use eye drops or can I take tablets to cure my condition? The answer to this is no. As with any other condition, the treatment that a patient will require is largely dictated by the severity of their condition. So we know that in patients with mild keratoconus, other than a pair of spectacles, they may require no other treatment and typically eye care practitioners will monitor them closely over time for any changes in their condition. As the condition progresses and the shape of the cornea changes, the eye's ability to perfectly focus light, as previously mentioned, becomes affected. A crucially important way in order to overcome this issue is the use of contact lenses. There are various different types of contact lenses, varying from soft contact lenses, hard contact lenses, and also larger scleral contact lenses, which not only cover the cornea, but they also cover the white part of our eyes. Typically in patients with keratoconus, they tend to wear hard contact lenses, also known as rigid gas permeable lenses. These lenses tend to be smaller in their overall size and diameter. Because the condition can progress differently in different patients, some contact lens companies also manufacture specific tailored contact lenses for patients. Contact lenses will allow patients to achieve their best vision possible. There can come a point in the management of patients when contact lenses are no longer serving their purpose and the disease starts to progress. In recent years, a new treatment has emerged for the management of patients with keratoconus. This treatment is called collagen cross-linking. Collagen cross-linking does not reverse the state of one's keratoconus, but what it can do is it can stall or stabilize it so that it no longer progresses. Collagen cross-linking in its simplest explanation involves the use of both ultraviolet light and vitamin B2 drops. These two components are used on the cornea in order to try and stiffen the cornea. Effectively, by trying to stiffen the cornea, you are trying to prevent any further changes 
in shape. The procedure typically lasts less than one hour and it can be performed in many outpatient settings. The procedure tends to be very effective, however, it may not be appropriate for every patient and therefore it is fundamentally important that eye care professionals carry out a thorough assessment of patients and then refer them to the necessary facility where they carry out collagen cross-linking. At this facility, typically run by eye doctors, they can then evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis and go through and discuss the merits and risks associated with this treatment form. I will provide a link below to collagen cross-linking for further reading. There are also several videos on YouTube where you can actually watch this procedure being performed. For those of you that are watching, do you know anybody that has had collagen cross-linking or have you had it yourself? What was your experience? How did it hopefully improve your vision? How much did it cost? please do share your comments and let me know. If all treatment options that we have thus far discussed have failed, then some patients may need to go on to have a corneal transplant. Thus far, I have only discussed the medical management aspects of keratoconus. However, there is so much more to the management of this devastating progressive condition. If you recall from the earlier section of this video, keratoconus tends to affect younger people. In these people, they are faced with the constant challenge of trying to come to terms with their deteriorating levels of vision. This can impact upon them and their lives in several different ways, ranging from an inability to perform optimally at school, an inability to perform at sports or leisure pursuits, and also an inability to potentially drive due to their poor level of vision. Some individuals may already hold driving licenses and through the progression of their disease may in fact need to give up their license. As with many other physical conditions that affect patients, one should not overlook the mental health impact of having such a disease. Imagine you were, for example, 25 years of age and your vision had been deteriorating over several years. You were then given a diagnosis of keratoconus and due to your poor level of vision, you are no longer able to legally drive to work. The social impact of something such as not being able to drive is huge for anybody, let alone a young individual. Therefore, it is fantastic that plenty of support is available for these patients, not only through their primary eye care or secondary eye care providers, but also through many charities and organizations. Obviously, these will vary from country to country, and I would strongly urge you to research the keratoconus organizations and charities that exist wherever you are. Through watching this video, I hope you have gained an appreciation of what keratoconus is, what causes it, how it is diagnosed, and the core components with respect to its management and treatment. As ever, thank you so much for watching this video and spending your valuable time with myself. I hope you have found this video informative and educational. Please do share all of your thoughts and feelings with me by commenting below. Comments, likes and subscriptions would be greatly appreciated.